Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 is your home for high school baseball and softball. The pitch from four, lined in the left field. That's down for a base hit. French is rounding third, and the Eagles walk it off and win the Region 2 Section 1 Championship over Musselman on the lane to water walk-off single. Join us all season long for coverage of every EPAC team right here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. We now move forward with the Jefferson County Board of Education race with Donna Joy and uh, James Southern. Uh, Ricky Twyford had a work commitment and was unable to attend and uh, we'll be on our program before May 14th for an interview, and we'll get Ricky's thoughts on uh, some of these Board of Education issues as well. Candidates will be given two minutes for an opening statement and a closing statement, and in between, we'll have questions from Bill Stubblefield from the Stubblefield Institute and also from our Talk Radio WRNR uh, Eastern Panhandle Talk Radio program, and uh, also from Steve Pearson, editor of the Independent Observer newspaper. Uh, we'll now move to opening statements, and we'll start first with James Southern. James? Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is James Southern, and I'm running for Jefferson County Board of Education. I've been in the area for over 30 years, and I have 13 years of successful teaching experience and eight years of IT and cybersecurity experience. My interest in running for the school board is based on my strong passion for teaching and learning and a desire to be useful to my community. One of my key areas of focus will be staff recruitment and retention. I think our students deserve the absolute best and we can't give them that without a more competitive compensation package for our staff. Beyond the base compensation package, we need to improve our school culture and climate so that our employees feel valued and want to stay. Collaboration and open communication are keys to success in these endeavors. I also feel very strongly about improving the cybersecurity posture of Jefferson County Schools. As of the time of this writing, 120 schools and universities in the United States have been victims of ransomware since August. That number increased to 121, which is almost one for every school day that we've had. We need to provide our students with the skills and resources to be safe online while giving them more opportunities to interact with the tools and technologies needed to meet the growing demand in a digital workforce. Thank you. Now the incumbent, Donna Joy. Hi, my name is Donna Joy, your voice for excellence in education. I'm an experienced board member. I have been teaching for 35 years, certified in all main subjects, including math and special ed. I've taught uh, from elementary through college. I currently teach special ed elementary school and uh, college level uh, psychology and research classes. I have uh, numerous degrees um, in education, uh, research, and math. I am running for school board with three clear objectives to elevate student achievement levels to match at least the neighboring counties of Loudoun and Washington, to boost employee mor morale, to enhance retention, and recruitment and ensure the district realizes its full potential. I'm known for my straightforward approach, emphasizing accountability and transparency. I ask the tough questions and advocate for data-driven policies and practices. If elected, I'll bring an unbiased perspective to the board as the only member without children in the school system. Furthermore, my active role as a teacher in Jefferson County, along with the experience as a coach and sports official, uniquely po positions me to understand the needs of the community. I, um, as a board member, a few of my accomplishments have been that I helped secure a $20 stipend for teachers who relinquish their planning time to substitute in other classes. I've helped to reinstate advisory committees so that we can bring in parents and community uh, opinion on policies. And um, I was instrumental in passing the state required now personal finance requirement of um, the incoming freshmen of 2024 will be required to take at least a half credit of personal finance. Um, and I also requested an audit of HR in our county. Um, so I feel like 
we are um, making great progress. I don't have a timer. So You're good. I am asking for your vote May 14th. Thank you. Thank you, Donna Joy. Now, for our first question, Steve Pearson from the Independent Observer. Okay, we'll dive right into it. So how would you describe the purpose of public education, and what is the role a Board of Ed, and specifically a Board of Ed member, does to support that? And which person are you directing let's, that question? Uh, let's start with Mr. Uh, Southern. Yeah, so I, I think public education really is designed to uh, give our young people an opportunity to change their story uh, and be successful. Uh, we're supposed to expose them to lots of different experiences so that they can identify their strengths and their passions so that they can figure out what their next step is, whether it's college, whether it's military, whether it's workforce. Uh, the role of the Board of Education is to absolutely support that and make sure that we're doing everything that we can to make sure that they have their best chance, that we're Uh, Joy. Uh, can you repeat? I didn't hear the second part of uh, it. Was, well, how would you describe the purpose of public education, mm -hmm. and what is the role of the Board of Education and you know a board member in supporting that? Okay. Um, well, I think that we need to be preparing our students for the workforce so that they have marketable skills. That's um, foremost, but we also need to teach them how to communicate and work and live peacefully and healthfully with one another. Uh, as a board member, I think my role is to bring out the best in all of the staff. I'm, we are directly supervisors of the superintendent, but we do encourage the superintendent to bring out the best in employees. Personally, as I mentioned in my opening statement, Stressing accountability and transparency, I think, is extremely important, especially now that we have such division, not only in the local school board, but in the country. We need to bring trust. We need the community to trust, and that's not based on friendships. Um, it's based on being transparent and um, data-driven policies, as I mentioned, not just what you like or what your child needs, but what works for most of our uh, students and staff. To build upon the question that Steve asked, and I'll ask you first, Ms. Joy, and then Mr. Southern will respond as well. In multiple surveys, teachers have listed discipline issues and administrative burdens as being among their greatest job frustrations. As a board member, realize other f or organization may be involved so in some degree, but I'm specifically talking about as a board member, what can you do to address the issue of school discipline and administrative overburden? Um, well, as a teacher, I completely agree with the frustrations of other teachers, and I've also read the recent newspaper articles about um, the president of the union. He doesn't agree with the new policy of um, the giving teachers more um, strength in removing children. There is a time for everything. Um, teaching special ed, I have a few students who are severely um, disabled, not necessarily because of at birth, it, a lot has to do with um, enabling by the families. And so one child can ruin a whole class, but if the goal of the administration is to score points on that West Virginia scorecard by lowering the um, number of referrals or suspensions, that's in a direct conflict with what is needed in the classroom. So I... Um, I forget the question. I don't remember where I was headed, but I agree that we, oh, what I would do is what you said. So I would lobby, which is my next plan after uh, securing the personal finance credit. My next mission, whether I'm elected or not, is to work with the legislators to deal with that West Virginia scorecard and those policies that are prohibiting the schools from being successful. Uh, I, I can explain them if you're interested. But um, So that, that would be the first thing I would do. Um, I don't think it's necessarily 100% that a teacher should have the final say in removal of a student. Sometimes there's personality conflicts. We have the SAT 
program where there's a committee and we definitely need a group of people to make decisions to make it more um, helpful for the student because the student is our priority. Hope that makes sense. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. <laughs> Mr. Southern, you should I repeat the question or do you remember? No, sir. Thank okay. you. Um, so I think that starts with a policy review and looking at what our current discipline policy is and making sure that it's actually being enforced. Uh, I know that from a teacher standpoint, there were a lot of policies in place when I was in teaching that we didn't enforce because we didn't feel that we were gonna get the support to enforce them. For example, at one point, Martinsburg High School tried to eliminate cell phone use in the high school. Uh, we did not feel like we had higher level support. So the second part of my answer to that as a Board of Education member is that 100% the, the administrators and teachers that are enforcing the discipline policy need to know that at our level, we are supporting that. If we don't support it, then that should be a policy change. We can't have something in writing that we don't enforce, and then teachers and administrators aren't sure which policies they can enforce and which ones they can't. Thank you. Okay. Steve Pearson. Okay, so um, what do you see as the key strengths of Jefferson County Schools and what did you see as the uh, most significant weaknesses? And we'll start with Dr. Joy this time. Okay, well, the weaknesses are that we are in a big transition. We have moved from an administrative a superintendent into a new superintendent with a very different background and qualifications, a different style. So that's you know one of the weaknesses, but it's also our strength that we are um, moving forward and. Um, I guess one of the, uh, some of the, what did you say weaknesses, I'm sorry. Strengths and weaknesses, you know, the, the good, the bad, I mean, what, what do we need to improve oh, okay. and what do we need to yeah, um, encourage? Some of our strength, we have, a, we have wonderful teachers. Um, in spite of all the cutbacks and all the policies that are working against them, they are still there and, um, I know how difficult it is. I've been teaching for 35 years, and it's easy to go on to another county to make more money. And But these are committed staff. Uh, we have wonderful programs in the, the athletics, music, theater. Um, we are... We have some committed board members who are trying to improve the school system. So those are, I guess... I don't know how much time it is. You're good. So, and, and what do you see as the, the, the biggest weaknesses? Oh, the biggest weaknesses? Well, one of them was that we were moving from, um, we're in a transition period. There hasn't been a lot of focus on academic achievement that I would think um, should have been there. Special education is has been a serious problem. That's part of why I got into um, running for school board because of the problems with the special ed program. I haven't seen a lot of improvement yet, so um, we're working on that. Another concern that I personally and I you know, advocated for the HR audit, we are pretty top heavy in um, Jefferson County. I think at one point we had twice, nearly twice the number of um, employees in the board office as Berkeley with half the number of students um, and so uh, we don't um, trickle down the money and the support into the classroom we don't bring in the the teachers and employees the um, you know all the employees ought to have more of a say I have requested that teachers and um, representatives from the service industry, the uh, buses, the cafeteria staff, that they be included in our board meetings. So those are some of the things that I think are needed so that we can hear from these individuals themselves, including the students, other than just hearing from everything that's filtered through one person, which is a superintendent who is looking at their, you know, actual, you know, supervisors. So. I'm, I'm not suggesting that Dr. Bishop is dishonest. I'm just saying that it's only one person, and we really need to hear from more of the um, employees and students. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Southern, uh, same question to you. Um, what do you see as the key strengths of the Jefferson County Schools and the, and the uh, most uh, glaring weaknesses? I think the key, str key strength that I've noticed as I've been out on the campaign trail is the community buy-in and support. 
Uh, I think that this community absolutely wants a strong school system and they are invested in it and they want to participate in it, which I think is really great. If you don't have that, then it's really challenging to have open conversations where effective change can be made. Um, I also have had the opportunity to witness a lot of passionate students and teachers through different performances, uh, a robotics event. Um, if you haven't gone out in the evenings and weekends to see what our students are doing, uh, then we need to do a better job of advertising it because I think we're doing some very good things. Uh, and it's because of that community buy-in and support. Uh, a glaring weakness is staff <coughs> recruitment and retention. Um, it's very challenging to have year after year success if you don't have organizational knowledge and experience. So if we're losing people after a couple of years or we can't fill vacancies, then it's gonna be challenging to establish a long-term goal uh, of improving student achievement and success. Um, if I'm being honest and then also uh, speaking to some of my campaign points, cybersecurity is a glaring weakness for every school system in the country and Jefferson County is no exception. Uh, an eight character password can be cracked instantly and kindergarten students have the same password requirements as the superintendent. Uh, there are a lot of things that we can do with existing resources to protect our students and our teachers' data. Um, and we also, along those lines, live in an increasingly digital world and we've got to make sure that our students know how to be safe online and interact with the digital world effectively and efficiently. Bill? Okay. Uh, let's introduce politics into the Board of Education. Uh, recently, there's been a move by some legislators uh, to make what is now a nonpartisan race, the Board of Education, to make it a partisan race. Uh, Mr. Southern, what is your response? Um, I, I don't, don't know that I have an opinion about partisan or nonpartisan. Um, I don't bring a personal agenda to the race. I have the interests of the community at heart, and I think that as a representative, my job is to listen to stakeholders. We've got stakeholders in the county, and it's not just people involved directly in the school system. I think it's the entire community. So whether it's Republicans or Democrats or somewhere in between, Perspectives are important. Uh, my perspective is my own, and it's based on my own unique experiences. And so if I'm not actively listening and soliciting for feedback, then I can't effectively lead and manage at the board office level. Um, I don't think that making the race partisan or nonpartisan would impact that, except that people would then vote along party lines and perhaps would stop listening to what candidates actually had to say as people. So I gather from that you would not be in favor of making partisan. You're happy with nonpartisan. I actually like that it's nonpartisan. I'm not sure that I would have been interested in running. Um, I had an opportunity to listen to your uh, presentation before this, and uh, I just don't think partisan politics uh, have any place in the school system. I think that we have multiple perspectives that we need to take into consideration, and if we're actively listening and engaging in conversations, I think that we can make a difference, and I don't think that has anything to do with partisan politics. Thank you, Dr. Shore. Yeah, I have nothing new really to add. He said everything that I would have said, um, but I agree that I don't think, I think we already have too much politics in education. We really need to focus on the things that matter, and that is bringing our school system up from the bottom, and you know, the state is at the bottom pretty much in the country, and that should be the focus. And Often the powers that be, and this is at the federal level, they like division um, because division creates conflict among the, the people. And uh, that shouldn't be our focus. And I don't like to be a part of that. So um, I, I hope some of our legislators listen to your response. Thank you. Uh, for Steve, one last question. We'll do one-minute answers on these ones, and then we'll move to closing statements. Sure. Um, why do you think Jefferson County parents and students are choosing homeschool and charter school options in, at a rate higher than uh, surrounding jurisdictions? There you go. Simple question for a one-minute answer. <laughs> yes. Let's, let's start with Dr. Joy. Uh, okay. Well, um, we since about 2016, uh, the achievement level has dropped just about in every area um, in Jefferson County. And uh, I'm not going to get into why. Uh, that, that's a big part of it. The, and I don't want to blame the state legislators in that West Virginia scorecard, but again, it ties the hands of the school system when you have the goal to be raise uh, graduation rates, whether they're um, 
real or not, you know, just hand them the degree so that it looks good. That's what happens. Um, nobody wants that for their children. And if you're part of your West Virginia scorecard is lowering the number of um, uh, suspensions, well, nobody wants their child to have to suffer because there's a behavior problem that nobody will deal with because it's going to lower the points. And when the goal is just raise the attendance any way you can, give them money, rewards, well, that'll work for the few that have that issue, but the kids that are there to learn, there, there's no incentive to them because Okay, sorry, no, you, my you, time you, is up. You um, can finish your sentence if you need to, yeah. So I, I can understand as a parent, if I could have, I would have removed my children from the school system. I was a single mother, and um, so I completely understand, but I am in full support of improving our schools so that um, our, our students and families will come back. Mr. Mr. Southern. Thank you. Uh, the, the most obvious answer that comes to me is resources. Uh, if I'm being honest, we live in a more affluent area than most places in the state, and so I think that a lot of parents here have the resources to homeschool, send to private school, or choose other alternatives than public school, or in other areas that might not be an easy option. Um, outside of that, I would be speculating a lot, and so this is where I think it's important that we have conversations. I definitely think that we need to do a better job of marketing the public school system and making it a more desirable choice for people that are choosing alternatives. Uh, so far, I've only talked to two parents that have chosen public school alternatives. One, uh, they chose homeschooling because of health concerns, and the other one chose homeschool simply, or uh, excuse me, private school simply because they could start their child earlier. Um, so I think to get the full answer to that question, we need to start having conversations with people that are choosing alternatives, find out why, and find out what we can do about it. Let's move to closing statements. Try to keep these between one and two minutes. And uh, since we started with uh, Donna Joy on the opening statements, we'll start with uh, James Southern on the uh, – I'm sorry, I started with you on the opening. We'll start with Donna Joy on the closing statements. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm Donna Joy. I'm looking for your vote on May 14th. I am the most qualified, most committed, most experienced, and most passionate uh, – about education of the candidates, in my opinion. Um, I'd love the opportunity to be a part of helping bringing the Jefferson County Schools up to the level that the students, parents, and taxpayers deserve. Um, what else? Um, as a, again, like I said, uh, if I'm reelected, you will continue. I have a track record of being straightforward honest. Um, I go for the, the questions that are needed. I'm not on the board to make friends, clearly, um, but I am there to uh, educate my fellow board members, and I feel 100% uh, proud of everything that I've done, and I have seen changes just among the board, even though I started as a, one of the most hated. Other people are copying, taking my lead, so they're asking more questions, and um, it's becoming a little more inclusive. So I feel like I really need to be to continue to be on the board to help the board. I have so many skills, and I don't hold back in using them. Um, as an educational researcher, I have a PhD in educational research and statistics. I can. Uh, look at the data and the research and say, no, that's not accurate, which is, you know, what I've done in the past, and that helped change the uh, paradigm that, you know, uh, minority students don't do as well, you know, and I showed the superintendent based on the data that's not what's happening. So we need those kinds of um, skills on the board. Um, I'm Donna Joy. Please vote for me May 14th. Thank you. Thank you. James Southern. I believe it's important to be a good colleague. During my tenure at Martinsburg High School, I served as band director, department chair, faculty senate president, region nine bandmasters president, West Virginia graded musicalist chairperson, and recent regional jazz festival chairperson. I was nominated for teacher of the year and West Virginia band of the year by my colleagues. I'm also the first and only student offered a graduate assistantship by the music department at Shepherd University where I completed my master's degree in music education. 
I was nominated for and became a finalist for two different graduate student awards for academic excellence and student achievement. I have consistently shown that I'm willing to put in the work to achieve at a high level. I've spent most of my career in leadership positions. I believe in treating people like they're people because they are, especially when we disagree. I believe it's incredibly important to have open dialogue and create a, a culture that is conducive to listening. I love this area and want to be useful to my community and to our school system. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you all today and look forward to our future collaboration. My name is James Southern, and I hope I have your vote on May 14th. James Southern, thank you very much. Dr. Donna Joy, thank you as well. We wish you both the best of luck in the upcoming election. Thanks for having us. We'll be back in four minutes and meet.